There's a hidden connection between the wings of the world's biggest airliner and the wings of an eagle. In wind tunnel tests, engineer Peter Barrington showed me how airliner wings suffer from spiraling vortices at the wingtips. Now we plan to solve the problem. This modification, inspired by an eagle's wingtip feathers, is called a winglet. Okay, have a look at the airflow now. As expected, the main body of the wing has a smooth airflow. But here, at the wingtip, there used to be a spiralling vortex. What do you see? No vortex. Now it's smooth. The vortex trying to curl around the wingtip finds its path blocked by the winglet. So it's as simple as that. Basically, it's a barrier that stops the air getting red. Exactly. And as a exactly. result of that, we win back this stretch of wind. Indeed. The vortex has been forced away from the wingtip and up to the top of the winglet. So the entire surface of the original wing is now creating lift, effectively doing the same job as a longer wing. That's what the eagle was doing. Indeed, I mean, I think if we had as long as the eagle did to evolve, we could probably get this a little bit smaller. Winglets can be made almost vertical to keep the total wingspan to an absolute minimum, just like an eagle's wings. So it turns out eagles are really good at flying. They are yeah. extremely good. Winglets play a vital role in getting the A380 off the ground. It's hard to believe that these tiny little modifications to the wings can make that much difference. But without them, the wingspan would have to be around 10 feet longer to achieve the same lift. Thanks to winglets, the wingspan is reduced to 261 feet and 10 inches, squeezing inside the regulation airport limit with just 8 inches to spare. And the technology behind it has its origins in birds. But then, you would expect birds to know a thing or two about flying. The world's biggest airliner was saved by one of Mother Nature's innovations. But solving one problem creates another. Once the monster is in commercial service, how do you keep its running costs to a minimum? Extra weight causes the engines to burn precious extra fuel. So the A380 must be kept on a strict diet. And here, on the final assembly line, I've got a unique chance to see its skin and bone. Wow. We never normally see all this stuff, because it's hidden behind carpets and internal walls and chairs and all the other comfy stuff we expect. But now, to see the skeleton, the structure of the thing, and I'm struck by, well, I suppose the only other man-made thing this big of being would be a building, and it would have thick stone walls. But here, without all the plastic stuff, you can see. It's got to be so tough. But it looks, I hate to say it, fragile. So the challenge for the A380's engineers was to keep its weight to a minimum without making it too fragile. Finding out how they did it will take me centuries back in time. To the brilliant idea that connects the A380 with an ancient but deadly Mongol bow. But first, I've come to this abandoned Air Force base in the east of England to do my own testing of lightweight aerospace materials. Paul Hogg, a materials engineer from the University of London, will be my guide. His suggested starting point is a material that's been in every aircraft from the Wright brothers to the space shuttle. Aluminium, an extremely lightweight metal. This panel is just 75 thousandths of an inch thick. So this is fairly typical of the kind of aluminium you might find in an actual aircraft. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's aerospace grade aluminium. You've got something that's quite representative of the way it's loaded on, a, on an aircraft fuselage, really, with the sort of frame structure. So with this frame rounded, that's, that's pretty useful. Pretty representative, I would think, yeah. 
Paul has a very strange test in mind. He's bringing in the heavy artillery, along with some unusual ammunition, chickens. Very, very similar to the sort of test they use for, for aircraft engines and fan blades, basically. Is it? Yeah. The aerospace industry uses chicken guns to simulate high-speed bird impacts at takeoff. It's a vital test of strength for the aircraft's outer skin. A punctured fuselage can cause the cabin to depressurize, asphyxiating the passengers. Or the bird impact could damage a wing, sending the aircraft out of control. Any particular, I mean, how do we... First. I don't know. <laughs> how do we select a chicken? That one? That's the one, that's the one. It's worth it. This is going to be very messy, isn't it? I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Yes, it is. The chicken is loaded. Paul sets the chicken gun to fire at a typical A380 takeoff speed. This will be a 180 mile per hour collision. I reconnect my. That is now live. But which will survive, the chicken or the aluminium? Five, four, three, two, one, fuck. Well, it was worse for the chicken. I'm amazed. It's deformed a fair bit, but it's, it certainly kept, uh, kept itself together very well. There's a dent, but no catastrophic puncture. But on the world's biggest airliner, saving weight is an absolute necessity. So what if we test thinner aluminium at just 35 thousandths of an inch? This is to save weight. So if we decided that the heavy stuff we used was too much weight, this is what we got. That's the sort of thing you do, yeah. Right, so, let's see what happens. But will it survive? I mean, straight through. Ooh, ooh. Just remind me, really this... Severe. We haven't used, like, baking foil or something here. This is... That's the real thing. What's given way? Why is it done that? Why can't it withstand that? Well, basically, it, it's really just down to the thickness. It's only got a certain amount of giving it. And when you've got a thinner material, then you're, you're really sort of stretching the limits of what it can do. A big hole. Not a good thing in an aircraft fuselage. <laughs> The thinner aluminium is stiff enough to make an aircraft's outer skin. But it isn't strong enough to withstand high-speed impacts. It bends, then tears completely like a sheet of paper. No aircraft could risk such a catastrophe on a flight loaded with passengers. But the Airbus designers found a way to make aluminium thin and at the same time, incredibly strong. And that's where the Mongol bow comes in. In the 12th century, the Mongol emperor Genghis Khan set his sights on world domination. And he planned to destroy his enemies with archery. This is the longbow, an extremely powerful weapon constructed from a single piece of wood. The wood must be strong enough to survive the heavy bending force of a man's body weight. But to conquer the world, Genghis Khan needed a bow that could be fired from horseback. By mounted warriors in a highly mobile army. I'm about to find out why that was a problem with traditional bowyer Steve Ralphs. I can see how the principle, the theory works, because, you know, horse, mobile, weapon great but practically how did it actually work how could i kill somebody with this sitting on this the first shot is here as you come in from the left hand side of the horse so it's one two three up and over four so let me just try those so sorry I've got one, if there's one two, thing three, i need a it's a compact weapon my arm's twisted now i can't three, four, and i can vouch for the fact that the longbow is not 